Would you lead us in prayer, please? And we'll get started. Saturday morning from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. I want to remind you about that. Fall festival coming up. If any of you singers want to be a part of that and sing that day, uh, be sure to bring you a soundtrack. Probably won't have any live music that day, uh, but be sure to bring the sound soundtrack. I get with Brother Richard Hudgens about that. Those Bibles are available out there in the lobby, entirely up to you. We're just making them available. Nobody's getting anything off of it. We're trying to pass it on to you. The thing that's unusual about it, there's an app that goes with the Bible. You put it on your smartphone, click on that verse, and it'll download all kinds of study material on that verse on your phone. Click out of it and go to the next verse. Same thing. So it's a pretty awesome tool to have. So they'll be available all month of October. The last Sunday of October will be cash day. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Uh, these ladies that are helping out with that, they don't want to be making change and keeping up with money. You can do a check or a money order, anything like that. But the last Sunday of October will be cash day, and they just have to keep up with it from that morning to that evening. So I know you could understand that, especially if you were the one trying to keep up with the money. Also, I've got a note up here from Brother Jeff. I announced that the salt ministry is going to be taking a trip up the mountains to the apple orchard. 
with lunch on the way, Saturday, October the 15th. So that'll be probably not this Saturday, but the next. They're going to leave the church at 9 a.m. and there's a sign up right back there at the back. So jump on that if you want to go and be with them that day. Brother Steve, what's next, buddy? You. Come on around. You can get it done. Oh, got Ricky. Uh-oh. Oh, Lord. Fasten your seat, Bell. All right, Ricky. Get excited now, boy. I was Don't stand uh, up here like the department it. store man. <laughs> when he was hopping with that guitar, he knew what was coming up. <laughs> Usually he bounces while he sings, and I said something about it. Hope I didn't kill this spirit, brother. Amen. All right, would you turn with me, please, tonight to the book of Philippians, uh, chapter 3. Philippians, chapter 3. I want to give you some encouragement tonight, and just pray that God will bless us as we look into his word. I'll give you just a moment. Philippians chapter 3. And when you find your place, would you stand for the reading of God's Word? <clears throat> preached all week last week, the camp meeting, and <clears throat> preached here three times Sunday, and I was fine. And now tonight, here I am, kind of got a frog. Pray for us. Philippians chapter 3, we'll read two verses to get us started. Verses 20 and 21. Here's what the Bible said. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall, listen to this, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto His 
glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. In there in verse 21, it says he's going to change our vile body. You might not realize it tonight, but I'm here to tell you from the Word of God, you have a shoddy body. Are you listening to me tonight? Hey, listen. I don't know what it is about gray hair. I believe it must be heavier than dark hair. When I was had black hair, I never got tired. But this gray hair wears me out carrying it around. Somebody give me a name. Anybody know where I'm at on this? Let me tell you, how many of you, one Sunday you get up and your shoulder hurts. The next week it's your knee. After that it's your hip. Then it's your back. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Give me a, hey, I'm here to tell you, the Bible says, we got a shoddy body. But I'm glad that I can report to you tonight. He's going to change uh, these vile bodies. Hey, isn't it going to be wonderful to live in a place? Uh, listen to me tonight. You'll never have another backache. You'll never have another ache or pain. You'll never have another bad hair day. Robert. <laughs> he didn't have any bad hair days now. Are you with me tonight? Let's look at this subject just a little bit. Ask God to bless it. Uh, Father God, tonight uh, we bow in the presence uh, of Almighty God. Lord, we do pray that you'd go back into the back uh, of our property and Lord, be with that Discovery Bible Club of uh, those preteens. Uh, and Father, bless them uh, and every adult worker. Uh, uh, come on up uh, to the teen church. Uh, I ask you to bless Brother Tony and his workers, uh, every teenager. Uh, I ask God you to be with every toddler and for that matter every baby uh, back there uh, in the nursery. And God, I just ask now uh, that you'd be with us. Uh, and God, for those of us uh, uh, that are the parents uh, and the grandparents, uh, maybe even the great-grandparents uh, of the church, uh, Lord, we're well aware tonight uh, that we have uh, a shoddy body. Uh, yeah. But Lord, let us look forward uh, with hope uh, and with anticipation uh, to the day uh, that you come back again. Uh, and when you come, you're going to change uh, uh, these vile bodies. Uh, and Lord, it will have a body uh, like yours. Uh, God, just give us some help, some hope, and Amen. some encouragement uh, mm -hmm. uh, tonight. We pray it uh, on this Wednesday night in Jesus, uh, in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, and all God's people tonight that are not ashamed uh, said what? Amen. Amen. Thank you. And you may be seated tonight. Amen. You know, folks, I, I got to think it earlier uh, when I was looking at this verse. Uh, there are a lot of things uh, that we change uh, uh, during the course of life. Uh, let me tell you, you change the oil uh, in your vehicle uh, quite often. Uh, and you change clothes uh, about every day. Uh, am I right so far? And you change the clock. Uh, you know, we go to daylight savings time and now in about uh, two or three more weeks, we'll change it back to standard time. There's a lot of things we change. A uh, lady gets married. Uh, she changes uh, her last name. There are a lot of things that you have probably changed uh, already, but there's one thing we've never changed yet, uh, but we will one day. You've never changed the body. Bodies. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, for that one that's in pain, uh, that one that's had surgery, uh, that one that is sick, uh, that one that is in need, uh, I'm glad that I can give you a promise uh, through the Holy Ghost uh, by the Word of God in the book of the, uh, the book of Philippians that the Lord is coming back one of these glorious days. To, uh, and listen, you're going 
get rid of that shoddy body. You'll get a body that'll never be sick. That'll never have any pain. Can you get some amens? That body you'll never have to worry about hearing the doctor give bad news. Honey, that body's lived for all of eternity future. We'll live in glory with King Jesus. I don't know about you, but that kind of excites me a little bit. Hey, we're going to get that glorified body and be able to live in the glory world. I was preaching one time not too long ago about heaven. And somebody came to me, Brother John. They said, well, Sam, well, we believe in heaven. We believe in streets of gold. We believe in gates of pearl. But why is it that our loved ones have to die to get there? Did you know the Bible even answers that? You remember Moses had been the right hand man of the Lord. And Brother Larry, Moses said, hey God, I've led the children of Israel. I preach and I prophesy, but I've never one time I've been able to look on your face. Just let me see you one time. And God spoke back and said, Moses, no man can see me and live. What that meant, the radiant glory of God was so awesome, it'd be like trying to stand on the surface of the sun. It would consume this old earthly body. But I'm glad somewhere between earth and Mars when the trumpet sounds. Honey, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we're coming up and we're getting out of here. Could somebody show out just a little bit? you got loved ones on the other side. And listen, they're going to rise first. After they do, then there we go. And like I said, somewhere between earth and the other world, we're going to be changed uh, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Our loved ones that are already there, they've got a glorified body right now in the presence uh, of Almighty God. So they're talking there in the book of the uh, Philippians. They said, our conversation uh, is in heaven. Uh, don't spend all your time conversing about sports uh, and about politics uh, and about what's going on in the world. We ought to be talking about heaven. Uh, we ought to be talking about the glory world. We ought to be talking about the mansions over there. We ought to be talking about seeing mama and daddy again. Seeing wives. Uh, seeing husbands again. Would somebody care to come in with an amen right there? Hey, listen, I don't see how you can be saved by the grace of God and not get excited just a tiny little bit to know that that body is going to be changed uh, and we'll have one like Jesus had. Woo! I like it. Let me get started now. Number one, that new body, I, I let the cat out of the bag already. Number one, the new body will be a glorified body. Pop up the first verse that we put in the computer. It was our text that we just read. Talks about in the previous verse, the coming of the Lord. Then he says, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. Now I don't know if you get a hold of what all that means, but let me tell you, disease and sickness is transferred uh, through your body uh, in the bloodstream. Uh, but see, when Jesus rose from the dead uh, and he appeared to some of his disciples, it scared them to death. Brother Travis, some of them said, Oh Lord, uh, it's a ghost. It's a spirit. Uh, Jesus said, No, it's me. And he went up there and he said, Handle me and see. It wasn't an apparition. It was a body. But Jesus said, it, handle me and see. I got flesh and I got bone. Listen, there was no blood. 
the blood was shed on the cross uh, for our sins uh, to forgive us and to birth us into the family of God and that glorified body will be living off the spirit. There will not be a heart pumping blood through your body. You won't need any blood. You won't have any blood because the blood of Jesus was shed and listen, we'll be living off the spirit of Almighty God. Right now the Holy Ghost comes to live inside you after you get saved, but one day He will literally be our life. It'll be the Holy Ghost uh, that'll keep you going. Not your blood strength, not your heart, not your brain, not your lungs, uh, not your kidneys. Somebody give me an amen. We'll be kept alive by the power of Almighty God as the Holy Ghost uh, is inside us. All of our blood is gone because the blood is what transfers sickness and disease. It'll be impossible for anybody to be sick in that glorified body. Like I said, I got a little ahead of myself in the introduction, but there'll be no sickness. There'll be no sadness. There'll be no sorrow. There'll be no pain. There'll be no problem. Lord, have mercy. I don't see how we can contain ourselves. Hey, I remember Easter about two years ago, we were out in the parking lot had church out there on Easter Sunday. Man, you talking about doubled over, tripled over? I couldn't stand up. My wife said, surely you're not going to try to go preach. I said, it's Easter Sunday. What do you think? She said, I'll start the car. <laughs> And brother, I mean, I could, I was holding on and hanging on. I was just like an old man, which I'm really not. And I mean, it was terrible. Man, if you'd have said something on that day about having a glorified body where there'd be no pain, I, in spite of my bad back, I'd have cut a somersault. <laughs> Some of y'all get excited. Are you plugged into what I'm saying? No pain, no sadness. You know, one thing down here in life, I don't care who you are, you might get a little sad sometime. Over there, you won't even have the capability of being sad. The Bible said that God's going to wipe all the tears uh, out of our eyes. Uh, and when He does something, He does it right. There'll be no tears uh, ever shed through all of eternity future after we get on the other side. He's going to change uh, our vile body that it may be fashioned uh, like unto his Amen. glorious body. Yes, Number one, the new body will be a glorified body. Amen, Number two, the new body, and I want you to hear me, will be a redeemed body. Amen. You said, Brother Sam, we sing the song, I'm redeemed. I want you to hear me. The only thing about us that's redeemed is our soul. That body has not yet been redeemed. That's why it decays and has sickness and goes downhill after you get a few years on it. Let me prove it. I'd like to show you scripture. Show me the next verse, please. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting, listen, waiting for the adoption to wit, listen, the redemption of our body. Right now my soul is redeemed, but this old shell, this body right here, it is not redeemed yet. But when he comes back again, he's going to complete the work of redemption. First time he redeemed our soul, took his blood, put it on the mercy seat before Almighty God in heaven and covered all of our sin. Somebody give me an amen. But when he comes back, he's bringing those bodies up, those that have been passed away thousands of years. They're coming back up and that will be the redemption of the body. Right now the body is not redeemed. But if you're saved and your soul is redeemed, you can count on Jesus to come back and finish the job. Hallelujah. Mm. I'm 
redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine, but only my soul is redeemed. He said, you got the spirit in you already, and you groan within yourself waiting for the redemption of the body. Biblical proof, your body is not yet redeemed. That's why your teeth start falling out. Hair turns gray. Back start hurting. Knees give out. Somebody give me an amen. amen. I can go on and on, but I was enough. You're feeling bad about yourself already. Number three. Not only will this new body be a glorified body, and it will be a redeemed body, but number three, the new body will be an eternal body. You know, people ask me sometimes, Brother Sam, do you really believe that Methuselah lived to be 969 years old? I say, well, what does the Bible say? They say, well, the Bible, but were their years same as our years? Their days same as our day. Somebody give me an amen. amen. Noah lived to be 950 years old. And then later on we whittled that down to 120. You remember there when the flood came, um, uh, Noah loaded up the animals on the, on the ship. We'll call it the ark. And uh, mankind died. Noah had preached and the Bible said, My spirit will not always strive with man. And from that point on, does not the Bible say, Thy days shall be 120 years. That's what the Bible said. But you know what? The way we live and the way we act and the things we do and the things we put in this body, oh, and the things people drink and the things people smoke, Come on, what else? Yeah, and the pills that people take, laced with chemicals. Amen. We have successfully cut that 120 on down. I got news for it. I don't mean to make anybody sad tonight. That body you're sitting here in, it's not an eternal body. That body is what the Bible calls temporal. I mean, it's only going to last for a temporary period of time. Pop up, please, the next verse. For this corruptible, that's your body and mine, must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. <laughs> Immortal bodies mean eternal bodies. Listen. That will be impossible for anybody to have a heart attack in heaven. Amen. It's impossible. Because you know what it is? It's an occlusion of the artery shutting off and so the blood can't get by. Well, there's not going to be any blood there to start with. We've already talked about that. There'll be no heart attack. Oh, simple things like this. There'll be no colds. Be no blood pressure problems. Somebody say amen. amen. I'll still be there to give you, make your blood pressure go up. But I won't. It won't. Not in heaven. Everything will be good. Hey, no COVID over there. Let me tell you this. If you were to go up to heaven tonight and look around and come back to give us a report, you'd talk about streets of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, mansions everywhere. But say, hey, Hey, brother or sister, how close is my mansion to the hospital? Oh, uh, you know, come to think of it, I looked all over and there were no hospitals up there. Uh, well, how far is it from uh, our mansion to the doctor's office? Said, uh, you know, there were no doctor's offices. And then somebody say, well, how far is it to the cemetery? Said all the way from earth, from heaven back down to earth, because there'll be no cemeteries in heaven. 
Somebody give me an amen. Nobody will ever die. Do you know the first cemetery in the Bible? It was the, uh, the it was called Machpelah. That's what the name of it was. Abraham had a wife by the name of Sarah. And Sarah died and he bought that parcel of land at Mac, called Machpelah. M-A-C-H-P-E-L-A-H. And buried her up in a cave. I, I've had the privilege of going down there to the cemetery at Machpelah. That was the first one that we ever told about anywhere in the Bible. But you know what? I'm glad I'm not so concerned with the first one as I am with the last one. Honey, somebody give me an amen. I know I'm getting ahead of myself for Sunday. I'm going to preach a little bit Sunday if God is still laying on my heart and letting me do it on the journey of life. Your journey start started when you took your first breath right after being born. And that journey will last until you pull in your last parking space. And your last parking space is the grave. And during that period of time is when we live life. But over there, no doctor's offices, no drug stores, no street drugs. You don't have to worry about somebody hanging out on the street corner in glory selling drugs. You don't have to worry about somebody coming up to you in heaven and open up their jacket and say, hey, you want to buy a good watch? <laughs> you know why? There's no time up there. And not only that, there are no scalpers up there. There are no thieves up there. You won't need a watch. It's going to be one long, eternal, and everlasting day because the Bible said that time shall be no more. Can you just imagine everything we do is broken down into little time increments. You work or you get paid so much per hour. A day is considered eight or ten, occasionally twelve hours. Then we base everything on a 24-hour cycle being a day, seven days completing a week, on the average of four weeks make a month, 12 months make a year, 10 years make a decade, and 100 years make a century. You know, I've known a few people get kind of old, but I have never personally known, I'm talking about personally, I have never personally known anybody to have a conversation with them over 100 years old. Maybe you have, and a few, a few will make that, but I'm telling you, it's very few and far between. But if you did live 100 years, what would that be in eternity? Look. That's it, and it's gone. Yeah. But up there, a hundred years will be nothing. We might say, hey, uh, you invited over to my mansion, and we'll cook something, we'll eat, have a good time. When you want me to come, instead of saying six o'clock or seven o'clock, they'll say, let's plan it for uh, 500 years from right now. <laughs> oh, we're going to live for eternity. Some of y'all think I'm just acting crazy. I'm trying to make us think about eternal values. This body, not only will it be a glorified body, not only will it be a redeemed body, but it'll be an eternal body. Number four, it will be a powerful body. You know, every now and then, I, I'm not. I'm not into all this stuff, you know, bodybuilding and all that, you know what I mean, and all this stuff they call fitness. You heard about that? What I'm concerned about fitting this biscuit is my mind. That's fitness, say amen. But wait a minute. Every now and then there'll be these bodybuilders. And man, they might grab a, a set of weights, barbells. And Pull that thing up, that big old grand boy of mine. He can press, I don't know, 350, 400 and something pounds and all that kind of stuff. And we think, good, not alive. What kind of power is that? 
But I want you to know the strongest person on earth will be a weakling compared to those that are in heaven. We're going to have a, a body that is powered up, not by steroids, but by the Spirit of God. Let's, let's catch this next verse here. we got a long prayer list. talks about this body here sown in dishonor, but it's raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. Lord, have mercy. You know, on these crazy, uh, well, I'll, let me put it like this. Back in the 1950s, television had not yet become hellovision. There probably some things on it might not have been just right, but it wasn't. Nobody was cursing and carrying on, no filthiness, nothing like that. Let's see if I can remember that. I, I don't know that I can. Wait a minute. Something about able to jump tall buildings in a single bound. What else was it? Hey, and he outrun us faster. Oh, wait a minute. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to jump tall buildings in a single bound. Y'all remember that? It's a bird that's playing. No, it's Superman. Now, we all know that was nothing but a picture. But let me tell you. It's going to be real when we get over there. You want to go from one side of glory to the other, you'll be faster than a speeding bullet. I mean, man, we're going to have power like you can't imagine. Now, we're going to get rid of this old vile body, but the Bible said it's going to be raised in power. So it will be a glorified body, a redeemed body, an eternal body, a powerful body, and number five, it's going to be a spiritual body. Let's see the next verse, please. Now this I say, brethren, dressing saved people, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit in. So we're going to be done with all this flesh and blood. Now, Sam will still be Sam. Earl will still be Earl. Philip will still be Philip. Crystal will still be Crystal and so on. It's not like we've been cloned or anything. And I know it's hard for the human mind to comprehend. It'll be a body, but it'll be a spirit body. A spiritual body. <laughs> Let me tell you something you probably never thought of. Down here, there are certain things we should be, but we're not. Let me tell you, when you get over there, you're going, your body, your being is going to be spiritual. You won't even have the desire of sin. Sin will be totally repulsive to you. Sin ought to be repulsive to us now. But in most cases, that's not true. But you think of the worst thing that would turn your stomach, make you sick right now in your body you're in. That's the way it will be when you get to the glory world thinking about sin. Because you can be in the spirit. Your being will be spiritual. You'll not have the capability to sin. You will not have the desire of sin. None of the, uh, there'll be no such thing as temptation. All that. Now, temptation in and of itself is not a sin because the Bible said, speaking of Jesus, he was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. So the temptation itself is not a sin. The giving in to it is a sin. But you will not even be tempted. You will be so spiritual, you'll hate sin. The thought of it will make you sick. You'll live in the spirit. You'll be totally happy. I, I know I say 24-7, there'll be no days and nights up there as we know it. But through all of eternity, you'll be happy 
because you'll be in the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me, I, I know I mentioned this several times, but what I'm about to mention and what some of y'all experienced a few years ago, some people live their whole lifetime and never experience it. One night, I don't know, I guess it's been 12, 15 years ago now, the choir was singing. I didn't start it. The choir didn't start it. All of a sudden, something hit this place. And I believe instantly, everybody simultaneously was weeping. Tears coming down their face. People standing there with their hands in the air. And that thing went on. And I mean, people got to shouting. Some of them got up and started running around the building. And no, I mean, nobody prompted anybody. And it went on and it went on. And, and nobody got tired. We were so plugged into the spirit that night. Everybody was enjoying themselves. Some of them jumping up and going, Woo! Older people even. Running around, jumping. Shouting, some of them doing like this. I mean, and it lasted and it lasted. An hour and a half later, I came to that pulpit and I said, I didn't start this, so I'm not going to stop it. Whenever the Lord stops, it will stop. Otherwise, have yourself a time. And it went on about another 30 minutes. And then when it stopped, it stopped. You know, there's a song that says, Jesus passed by a woman one day. Amen. Let me tell you what I think that was that night. I actually believe that the Lord's presence got so real around here, we just couldn't control it. There's still people, I'm talking about it, but some of you that were here, you remember it well. People say, I've never seen anything like it in my life. And it went on. And you know what? Normally, if I kept you two hours, people be moaning and groaning and passing out in the seat. Boy, that night, everybody was smiling and shouting. And when they were weeping, it wasn't because they were sad. And man, everybody went out of here so pumped up. And boy, for a year, every service that was mentioned. I believe that night God was waiting on the side. I believe he slipped in a door and I believe he took about two hours across by this congregation. And then he went on out. He was just here to check out what we were doing. And as good as that was, Nobody got tired in two hours. Let me tell you what, in heaven, 2,000 years be like that. I like that song, Amazing Grace. It said, after 10,000 years, we've no less days to sing God's prayer than when we first began. Boy, I'm glad these old shoddy bodies gonna be done away with. One day it'll be perfect in every way. Let's pray. Our Father God, we do thank you tonight for the privilege of being in your house on Wednesday night. I'm asking you, God, to give us all a little encouragement, a little extra peace and to know that our loved ones that have left us, they're going to live again in that glorified. They already are in heaven, but we'll be with them one day. And these old bodies out in the cemetery will rise. And they'll change from flesh to spirit bodies. And Lord, we'll be changed in a moment. The twinkling of an eye. Help us, God, to rejoice at that great, and wonderful thought. Help us, God. Save someone that might not truly be saved. Encourage the believer. Help us, God, just to be fired up. Have enough motivation to keep on keeping on. We pray 
in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As our musicians play for us, would you stand, please? Church officers, as we do every week, would you come and pray? Good to see Brother Bobby Mayfield here tonight and recovering from surgery. seated for just a moment. I can confirm tonight that we are going to have uh, Brother Rayford's brother Gary's funeral Friday. The visitation will be at 11 o'clock at Sosby's up here in the Homeland Park area. And then the service itself will be at 12 noon. After that, proceeding out to the Veterans Cemetery. So let Rayford know you're praying for him and give him a little word of encouragement. But that's Friday, 11 o'clock visitation in the service at 12. Uh, also, tonight is missions night as the last Sunday, excuse me, the last Wednesday of any month and the first Wednesday. That's the night we accumulate uh, money when we have uh, uh, taken on a personal missionary. On our prayer list, pray for Brother Rick Owen. And Rick may be listening in, but if he is, I still I just want you to be up to, so you'll know how to pray. Uh, today, uh, Rick decided no more treatment, and he's going under hospice program. Um, actually, I was talking to him on the phone, and Dorothy said, I believe this is hospice calling now. So I hung up uh, not long before church time. So Rick's got a lot of fluid in his lungs and not doing well. Bear down in prayer. Pray for Brenda Adams. Continue to hold her up as she's not doing well. Judy Crooks had been in the hospital. Mac Williams, the hurricane victims, Anthony McLean, Dana Brock, and Chris Erskine. That's uh, Larry and Connie's son and daughter. And their son moved out to the LTAC unit over in Greenville. So that's a step in the right direction. After about 50 some odd days out there on that ventilator, not on the ventilator the whole time, but the majority of the time. And then Chad Parsons, Angie Chapman, Ed Pelkey, uh, Bobby Mayfield, as I said when he came down to pray, good to see Bobby. Also, John Malloy, Ed Loftus, Johnny Cox, um, uh, let's see, uh, Jenny McGahad, Blake Durham, Greg Spearman, Robert Lynn Gaddis, Debbie Hudgens, Ray Todd, Terry Mulkey, Carzell Keaton, Dennis uh, Gillespie. Virginia Clary, Rufus Brown, Betty Shedd, 
Adam Tilly, and I think I had a new note on here again, had another seizure, I think. So that's Lynn Gaddis, the son in Florida. Greg Payton, Odd Swilling, been in the hospital. Robert Roach is going to have to have surgery upcoming. Uh, let's see, Paul uh, Bryson, Mike Brooks, Devin Catton, uh, Samantha Bush, and the new baby, I believe it says. Edna Moritz, Ralph Partain, Angie Adams, Martha Jo Harrell, Sonny Powell, got test upcoming. <clears throat> Uh, Jan Howell, Butch and Jonathan Moore, Sandra Powell, Dale and Lisa Hart, Corey and Kim Williams, the babies, Tom and Dot Gregory, Diane Moore, Christy Moore, Jessica Ritchie, Linda Nightingale, excuse me for this. I think it's Sharon Holland. <coughs> We gotta get new pens that write better. <laughs> Patricia Banks, Drew Hudgens, and the note here, that's Richard's brother, uh -huh. yeah. said Drew was transported to Ann Med uh, just a little earlier by oh, yeah. ambulance and he was incoherent. Oh, you see that. Drew comes to the early oh, service that, no. a lot, that's Richard's brother. I'll pray for him in that situation. Families in bereavement, the Howells, and I just said that service, and that's also Preston's uncle. I want to say that there's two family members there. The Davenport family, the Vickery family, the Cantrell, the Young, the McMahon, the Davis, the Gooden, G-O-O-D-I-N, the McConnell, the Waters, the Batten, the Kraft, and a second Vickery family, meaning John and his family. What about unspoken requests? We'll give them to the Lord tonight. <clears throat> Have a great week. Hope to see you for Bible College. Yeah. Ricky. All right. Pray for Betty Grant. Many of you probably know her ran that tax service right up here on Murray Avenue for years in rehab. Now miss any others. All right, let's pray and ask God to meet the need as we know that he will. Uh, Brother Ronnie Davis, brother, would you close us in prayer tonight? Hope to see you Sunday charged up, ready to worship the Lord, and uh, make our lives count for him. Brother Ronnie. Father God, we're thankful that we can praise you tonight and lift up the praise of Jesus because he's not only our Savior and our Redeemer, He's also our healer. <coughs> yes, God. Yep. He's still got all power in yeah. heaven and earth. Yeah. And God, all we got to do is pray to him in faith. Yeah. Without faith, you can't please God. Yeah. Those yes. who come to God must believe that he is God yeah. and his rewarder of those who diligently yeah. seek his face. God, may we be seekers yeah, of his face, dear God. Yeah. Oh, you yes. Yep. God, we thank you for what you've already done, for the healing you've already done to us. Those who have been set free, God, we thank you. Oh, been set yes. Free from yeah. the God of yes. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, and He's coming back soon. Prepare our hearts to be ready for our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Missions offering to.